and this is the itch, Double Spencer, and we're here to talk <laughs> about Windows 10. Hey Spencer! <laughs> hey Spencer! Yeah! <laughs> anyway, so, a lot of news came out recently about Windows 10, they had all their big presentations on it and stuff, and it looks pretty darned exciting. They were presenting the shit out of that shit. They sure were. And the most important thing that they presented that, well I found anyway, was connectivity. That's right. Between all different Windows 10 um, software supported So you got phones, things. you got tablets, computers. And I think there's a little thing that they call an Xbox One that might connect with them all too. What? Something in that neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Xbox One is able to uh, is is getting the free update, which we mentioned, right? Is we free. That. Yeah, oh, well, it's there free. You go. Um, <laughs> is getting the update as well. Um, obviously, uh, it's aesthetic changes to it, such as you know the way that the the quote unquote dashboard looks and and whatnot, and also uh, functionality upgrades, which is obviously good for Xbox One, but also good for people who are a fan of Windows. Um, I know producer Eric uh, sent us a little angry text about something. We'll get we'll get into <laughs> we'll the get to free that. side <laughs> later. But first, how it works: Windows 10 is apparently kind of a combination of Windows 7 and Windows 8. So everything that you really loved about Windows 7, mixed with the improvement of things that you didn't necessarily <laughs> love about Windows 8. Yeah, 8.1. That we'll say. start menu <laughs> meant a lot, you know. So yeah, a, a good point is the start menu, where when you start it up and click on the button that's still on the bottom left, which is where we're all used to it. It actually creates kind of the same tablet feature that we're used to with Windows Phone. Yeah. Where you get the big customizable squares and selections like that. which So it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. And when you're using the search function, it actually also searches Google. Well, actually, I think it searches Bing. <laughs> Maybe that's a setting to change. Yeah, but upgrade. It, it does a search on the internet for what you're searching for as well. Yeah. So that's good. Cool. Yeah, Hopefully they're... you don't have a... Tiny young Asian girls, like somewhere in your computer. Yeah. For, then you'll <laughs> Hopefully suddenly not. pull them up throughout the internet. Right. But <laughs> on, just don't look in the browser. <laughs> <laughs> right. But on the bright side, there's a lot of stuff that um, there were other things that happened at that convention uh, or that convention, the reveal yeah. in general and all that stuff. But uh, the general consensus that seems to be going across is they want um, fluid accessibility amongst all products, which is great. Uh, the most important thing that they did was, hey, we're going to release the same operating system on every platform simultaneously, right? Simultaneously. Right. Right. So everyone's on the same page. And uh, assuming that Windows 10 is just going to, you know, is going to be a, a, a great operating system for people, you know, let's forget about 8 you know, <laughs> for a second. Um, well, from what I'm understanding, 8.1, I, I don't have Windows 8 myself. I yeah. stuck with Windows 7. But from what I understand, Windows 8.1 kind of fixed all the problems. It really did. I mean, the biggest problem was what everyone had a problem with the start button. Right. Um, but I mean, that's so that's good. When I hear the term global integration, I think of Apple. I think <laughs> yeah. Apple's kind of done a really good job with their cloud stuff, kind of being the forerunners of that, and kind of setting up everything to kind of connect to each other. Debatable. I hate the Debatable. Apple's cloud. I I hate it. I you know it is what it is. But they they kind of took that and ran with it, and what, I think that really made them successful. And I think one of those Microsoft is taking a big page out of that. Yeah. Um. But that being said, one other thing that Apple does is they make their operating systems free when they release them. And I think Microsoft caught on to that and is doing that on this one. But are they doing it because of that? Or are they doing it in a way to make up for what people consider as 8.1 or Windows 8 to be kind of a letdown? Well, you know, one thing that I do find interesting about it is I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I remember. So so check this out. Certain things. Um, Back in the past, we have had to pay for it before. Yeah. It's, it was a cost. It was something you had to pay for mm -hmm. that nowadays is offered for free. Um, right. We just got done talking about how PowerPoint, for instance, mm -hmm. or uh, or Word, Office, for the most part, is just free now. It, seem, it, it seems strange to pay for that. Technically, you still have to, but so many programs just give it to you. Yeah. Um, so many things you can get online, Google Chrome, or whatever the case is. Right. And that's, in my opinion, that's what they're going towards. Should should our customers really have to pay for an operating system? Well, they should pay for our other products. That's a great point because a lot of people are saying that we are owed a free operating system from Windows. What was that? Owed? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I, what does this mean? Uh, all right. So I the first time that I started looking up into all this stuff, when I heard that it was going to be free, I was like, that is freaking fantastic. I love the fact that Windows is doing this because 
it's a hundred and twenty dollar program. It's a hundred and twenty dollar operating system that when you build computers like I do and a few other other of my friends, one of our biggest struggles is getting operating like legit operating systems <laughs> on, onto these computers. Well, you're um, crazy. <laughs> so the fact that this is free, I mean, granted, it is you still have to purchase Windows Seven or Eight Point One to get the free upgrade to Ten. Um, but I thought it was um, it, it was amazingly generous of Windows to do this because they didn't have to. They've been making profit off of selling these for so long. There's no reason for them to have to give it to us for free. But every article I came across basically said, yeah, that's right, Microsoft. Give me more. You owe me this. Microsoft doesn't owe anybody shit. And it just got me really frustrated because it there's – that sense of entitlement that all of us as consumers have needs to go away. Like we, yeah, we govern who gets our money, but it's the same thing. You chose to pick Microsoft as your operating system. You can go Linux, you can go Apple, you can do whatever you want with your operating system. You don't have to go Windows and they just then gave you a free copy. I don't see a reason to be angry at them at all. I'm really um, excited from what I've seen. It's got some pretty fantastic features. I'm ready to make the jump and yeah. to get it for free. That actually makes me want to buy an Xbox more. It actually, yeah. it actually makes me a little bit regretful that I jumped into getting a Note 4 recently. Because I'm actually kind of curious to see how it, all the integration works with, yeah. with a Windows phone. I would give the Windows phone some time. The, the, the Play Stores, like for to download apps, is there's just not enough developers for Windows right now. Like you, you can't even get like a fully functioning YouTube app on your phone. Oh God! Um, they they have these weird versions of them and stuff. So interesting. Um, but yeah, the the Windows eight point one. The the last thing I want to say on this is Windows eight point one was a great operating system. It it lowered efficiency costs. It uh, it was fluid. It was nice. It was it was a very great performing operating system. Now eight point oh was just as functional, but people didn't like the way it navigated. And that was the only complaint that I ever heard about 8.0 is the navigation. Um, now with Windows 10, it's keeping a lot of the same efficiency, but it's also adding voice command um, to where you have Cortana now, um, which you can speak to and they can do all the voice activation stuff, like much like Connect does. Um, they're adding that to your computer. Um, other than that, uh, those two features right there, the efficiency and the efficiency is the most important part about any operating system ever. Um, that's why XP has been noted as like one of the greatest uh, operating systems that greatest all time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a seven fan myself, but seven act yeah seven is great. <laughs> but honestly, if you go to eight point one, you will notice improvements in speed in your computer. Interesting in your computes. So I'm all for it. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Spencer. And I'm still Spencer. We're the two Spencers. <laughs> this is the Etch. And, and this I'm is... Eric. <laughs> I'm producer Eric. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to this video, we create new videos every week. Every week. Thanks for joining us, guys. This thing is killing my fucking chin so hard. I can't even get comfortable. <laughs> this shit hurts.